Hotel Seville and Hellas, TBH KO Boxing and the Sergi family. Welcome you along to Festival Hall, Friday night, October 14, 2005. Our opening contest scheduled four rounds of boxing in the middleweight division. Ringside physician, Dr. Peter Lewis, members of the Professional Boxing and Combat Sports Board of Victoria, representing Sports Minister Justin Madden at ringside. Your judges are signed under the 10-point must system for the opening bouts are Wayne Ashdown, Anika Williams, Gus Mercurio. Your referee in charge of the action, proudly wearing white Representing the World Boxing Council, it is James Boland. Your timekeeper at the bell, Damien Membry. Let's get the show rolling. Introducing first, four rounds of action. In the blue corner, on my right, ladies and gentlemen, turning professional tonight after a decorated amateur career. 45 amateur fights, 23 wins. He was the Victorian boxing middleweight champion. He was a Golden Gloves champion under Team Brizzy at the Calabria Club. Last Saturday at Bendigo, he shaped up for his pro debut, fighting Commonwealth Games representative, Jared Omani. With, in the corner, the president, Daryl Ford. He comes from Eddie Maguire territory, tipping the scales at 71.60 kilograms, red trunks with a touch of black and white. Would you give him a warm welcome? Cool hand Luke Maloney. <laughs> and across the ring of my left, occupying the red corner, under the management of Peter Maniatis, with Dave Hegarty in the corner, from the Tarnate Boxing Club in Melbourne's Western Region. In amateur boxing, 20 fights, 16 wins, Tipping the scales at 70.40 kilograms. Black trunks with white. Would you welcome part of the destruction team, G. Sims. Jim Bolan. Well, welcome everyone here tonight to Festival Hall. Peter Manianis Promotions uh, having uh, back here at the House of Stoush. Andy Woodall working the corner with the team team. Adrian Berlin, former national champion. Has managed to get uh, tonight's big fight night on here, Peter, and I wish welcome here to Peter Manianis himself. And Robin Kemp and the Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Stephen, and as always, how do you do, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, thank you very much, Robin. Well, this is the first bout here. Two beginners here in professional ranks. Luke Maloney coming out of the blue corner and Jay Sims out of the red. Sims is a south port, so he comes out railing straight away. I'd hardly call Sims a beginner, Stephen. No, no, well, the 20 amateur fight, 16 wins, uh, but in professional ranks, Robert, both boys are beginners. You do agree with me there? I do not demur from you whatsoever, Stephen. Thank you, Robert. Both yes. boys extremely fit. Oh, aren't they? They're fine physical specimens, Peter. Someone coming in uh, there is uh, grappling with uh, Maloney and uh, Bolden having a word to both of them at the moment about uh, where they're uh, where they're actually at there. Maloney poking out that left jab. It was a nice punch that uh, uh, caught the Sims, but now they're grappling again, tying each other up there with the uh, gloves. And uh, it's, a, it's an in-close match there at the moment, Peter. It is in close, and both boys are just feeling each other out, but they're used to that fast pace coming from the amateurs. They've both got to settle and pick Ooh. their punches. Yeah, well, nice to uh, uh, a straight left there from uh, uh, Sims on Cool uh, Hand Luke. Found him. Well, no doubt these lads really want to get into it, Stephen. They're enthusiastic debutants. They want to make their mark in the world of professional boxing, and good on them, too. It's full marks to you, Peter, for getting these lads here tonight. Oh, well, you know, both boys are keen to turn professional. It's just a matter of timing for them, and then the timing is right, and both of them could fight each other, and the fight's pretty close at the moment. It certainly is. Uh, cool and Luke throwing some punches around the head region of Sims. Now there are a couple of scoring punches. Sims is a picture of concentration, Stephen. He really is. He's looking for that opening. And as he's uh, biding his time there. And there comes him with a straight left, rushing forward there, but got himself tangled up with this uh, with the cool hand Luke on the ropes. And the bowl in the air is going to have another word to the. Uh, he's having a word to uh, Sims. Nothing much in that, gentlemen. Cool hand Luke throwing more leather there and trying to get a straight left working. You got quite a good left there a moment ago, Stephen. Yes, he certainly right. did. And that uh, Boland has pulled them a, 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 a together, gentlemen, three times in that first round. They have discussions about the tactics. So, uh, Peter, how did you pull? What's the Jim having a word to about there? Pretty close round. That was fantastic. Actually, both boys having a go. Yeah, but uh, Peter, about Jim Boland, why he brought them in three times. 
Dodgers there for uh, no indiscretions of any type. We're just warning them about uh, uh, being fighting a bit too intense. I thought he was concerned about the heads. You know, there was a risk of an unintentional clash of heads, Steve. And you can see that particularly with Sims, who had a tendency to charge. Good on him. I'm not criticising him, but it is a act uh, like that that occasionally will cause a mishap, totally unintentional with a clash of heads. Poland was quite right to uh, caution him about the risk he's taking. I think that was once again good, good uh, refereeing by Jim. Yeah, well said there, Robert. Uh, as far as that's concerned, to uh, protect the lads from uh, any unnecessary or unwarranted uh, head injuries. Also, Stephen, you do see so often, not often, not often but not, not infrequently, an unintentional clash of heads where you get a cut eye and the fight has to be stopped and the fans don't want that tonight at Festival Hall. Certainly not there. Well, uh, Sims coming out uh, reasonably hard and now... Uh, Again, Tulane Luke's trying to get that straight left working, bouncing around, trying Cer to control the situation, Robert. Certainly moving, isn't he, Stephen? Uh, he, he's getting more yards in than uh, Jay Sims at the moment. Now, he's certainly flew it on the feet, oh, isn't it, oh, about oh, that? Mate. Came over the back there and... Oh, yes. Punching yes. on the ribcage from over the top of the shoulder was unusual. Oh, that's just enthusiasm. Beat him down the tree, boy. And what a wonderful occasion to make a debut in professional boxing at Festival Hall, Stephen. It just couldn't be a better, a better place, could it? It's just got a fantastic atmosphere about it, Robert. No doubt about that. Oh, I think back many times in the 1960s when my father used to take me here on Friday night, I'd watch some of the greats. Leo Young Sr., Sharky Raymond. I've got so many memories of yeah, you, Stephen. certainly have no doubt about that. Now, a couple of nice punches there from Phil Han Luke there. A nice straight left and a right hand which caught... Uh, Sims right on the uh, nose, on the button, on the button as such, a uh, slip there from Sims as he tried to rebalance there and pin Maloney into that neutral corner with Bolton looking on uh, quite feverishly. Indeed he is. And uh, the Gilhan Luke there trying to dominate the situation there, but uh, not a lot of clean shots in there at the moment. He's looking for that opening, Stephen, and he's doing it uh, with great enthusiasm. Sims he wants is to tying him up though, Robert. He's still grabbing the arms. I'm surprised to bowl and didn't make comment to him then uh, grabbing again there. Sims in close. Look, that's intelligent boxing, Stephen. When when Maloney's got a run on, he wants to stop him. Nice right hand, a straight right from uh, Coolham Luke Court. Sims on the button. Beautiful punch that was. That was. That was well discharged, yes. And also a nice left hand then from McKillhan Luke at the same time there. Sims again coming in, but the boys are going to tie themselves up. Drop back, Luke, drop back. As uh, Luke just gets in a, a right cross. Yeah, no, that's, 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 that's like it, though. Very hard on the neutral corner. And he goes the bell. I mean, round two. What a uh, very good start to proceedings uh, here tonight. But the first round pretty even, Robert. I couldn't split the next round. We were indisposed on comments at the end of the first round, but I had the cool hand Luke uh, slightly ahead on that round. I thought his punches were a bit crisper and a bit cleaner. I actually thought Simbles was starting to hang on and grab a little bit there uh, uh, in the proceedings. I did prefer the work done by uh, cool hand Luke ever so slightly. But uh, both boys need to get a pat on the back uh, for their first professional bout. Oh, the enthusiasm is, is absolutely not in question. I agreed with you, Stephen. I thought that uh, Cool Hand Luke got a couple of good uh, shots in there on the opening, so they perhaps didn't have the sting in them he'd hoped for. There was a very nice uppercut in the red corner he got, which uh, took Sims unexpectedly. That uh, right cross and did certainly sting him. And he's looking for that opening. He's working away there, and that, that's clever boxing. So. Very, uh, very clever stuff at the moment, so no doubt about that. Very clever indeed. But not to take anything away from Jay Sims, he's, he's a good competitor, he's giving it at his all, you can't Ooh. take anything away from him. Yeah. Bit of a slip there from uh, Cool Hand Luke there, just yeah. lost his footing. Yeah. Yeah. And again, the Jim Boland having a word to the boys. As all good referees should, he's doing it extremely well tonight. Oh, nice right cross there from uh, Malone, caught to Sims around the air hole there, it was a nice punch that. And Boland again having a word to Luke Maloney. Now, what I didn't quite see what that was for, but... Uh, oh, nice jab there. Got him on the button. And that, uh, that was a nice jab too, and he moves away beautifully. He's got good uh, uh, retractable uh, movements uh, there. Uh, uh, Maloney. Maloney's always anticipating the response. And once again, that's the hallmark of a, a well-prepared boxer, Steve. He certainly is, and that's correct. Uh, Strike, move in, move out. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, waving punches there, sort of... A, Sims uh, would seem like the open palm there a couple of times of the hands. As uh, all good referees, Reese says, and Maloney sticks to it, protect yourself at all times. Mm. 
That's the mark. Oh, punching oh. left hand. But oh, oh, boy. They, they were good. That left hand, uh, we heard the slap of that at ringside. That was a very nice punch. Sims is trying to come back there on the moment. He's, he's annoyed. He knows he's got to reassert his authority here on the fight, Steve. Yeah, well, I don't think he's actually had it in the first place there, Robert, in terms of where he's been at. But uh, he's uh, certainly stung into action by uh, Maloney's uh, punch. The point being that you're seeing a few more determinative scoring punches, Stephen, and, and uh, Sims is smart enough to know that. He's got to square the ledger or he's going to be left behind. Maloney bleeding from the right nostril as well. Yes, he is. A bit of blood from the right nostril. Nothing his corner won't be able to fix at the next belt. Mm. I'll put adrenaline in that nostril. Sure. Three. The Rock of the World Boxing Foundation owner, Well, look, yeah, Luke Maloney, having very well here at the moment, uh, thought that uh, had the crisper punches again and a couple of nice, one particular left hand there, as I call it, was a hard punch. Stung uh, Sims into some action, but um, this one's the second building. He's a great work at it. We've got up with the last round here. And it's at the moment, arguably, I would say arguably, could be two points behind. So how did you score that last round, Steve? Well, look, I've got, uh, I have got uh, uh, Cool Hand Blue marginally in front as we speak. Marginally. And Simmons uh, uh, would have to come out now with uh, a very big round to see if uh, they can uh, address the situation. Stephen, as the young lads touch gloves and get right back into it. Oh, and, uh, he's on the canvas and he's putting the standing eight count on from that the punch from uh, Cool Hand Luke. And there's a cut. There is an eye cut from that. Uh, is it above the eyebrow or is it? It has to be. It's just above the oh, eyebrow. Oh, big Very punch. good punch. From uh, Cool Hand Luke to came out and decided to unleash some heavy artillery there. So uh, that was a very good blow. And uh, Boland begins speaking to them. Sims coming in, it's on the backward step now with the standing eight count there to start the fourth round. That does it. Very nice combination that struck Sims again from the full hand loop. It's lived his purposes at all, getting that first uh, yeah. standing eight count. And Sims, Sims. he seems to be a little bit there, Sims looks a little bit tired to me too. Yeah, Maybe I, gasping for a bit of air. I don't think there's quite enough gas in the tank, Stephen. Oxygen could be the decider. Yeah, you're quite right. He's Luke, a bit, bit wobbly. Luke is working hard now, he's going to work on that eye too, I'd say, with that jab. Oh, a beautiful uppercut from the Maloney's classy boy. Got some nice punches here in this final round, and uh, Boland having a good look at the Sims to see what sort of condition he's in at the moment. And then as Sims comes in hard, tries to pin Maloney on the ropes. Well, these boys are going hammer and tongs. Maloney needs to get off the ropes. He has got off now, but he needs to get out of there. Doesn't nice, need to be tied up. Nice right from Maloney. He doesn't need to be tied up, Robert, like no, that, because that doesn't serve his purposes. He's got to keep moving around. He wants the wide open spaces, Steve. No doubt about that. He needs to get Sims at a distance so he can uh, deliver the uh, jab and that right cross. I wouldn't be in that ring for all the rice in China. Oh, look at, look at Sims go. Sims is trying to uh, re-establish something here at the moment, but uh, he's uh, grappling and uh, Boland has um, again put them to up. And, oh, crunching straight right from Cool Hand Luke. He got two in there. What a beautiful punch that first one was, though. It was hard. That was a showstopper, Steve. Straight and hard, and there goes the yeah. round of the fight. But uh, Steve is chasing the spinners. He's going to the fight. And uh, Cool Hand Luke has put in a great uh, effort here first up, you'd have to say. And I don't think there'll be too much uh, difficulty for the judges to work this one out. I agree with you there, Stephen. And uh, there's little more you can say about that. But not to take anything away from Jay Sims. He gave it his all. Tried very hard. Got up after that uh, punch early on in the last round, and he went on to put himself very formidably. No, he certainly did, Robert. And um, Sims, a marvellously built athlete, um, very muscular. Uh, if anything, probably aerobically, you had a bit of trouble in the last round. But uh, up until then, 
um, he was uh, going he was going along all right but it was just a bit too difficult at the finish there because uh, Coolhan Luke when he came into the final round and managed to get that standing eight count that was uh, all she wrote that was a that was a deciding moment in this fight because Sims was the one who needed to exert authority right from the word go to have any prospect whatsoever and as it turned out Maloney was able to really dominate the situation and that's how we found it then Howard Lee will be going to get the cards from the uh, judges uh, in any tip of the clock in just a moment. The world with Alf Shaw. Alf, good evening to you. We give a very warm festival hall welcome to Barry Boy Michael. I be a super featherweight champ in the world. Barry Michael back at the house of Stoush with Alf Shaw, legendary ring announcer. Good on you, Alf. We welcome Team Westcombe here tonight, part of Daryl Ford's Team Westcombe. Fat Albert, good evening to you. Thank you for your great support of Peter Maniatis. Very generous support. Thank you, Fat Albert. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for two men stepping up to professional boxing for the first time. What a great match they put on. Luke Maloney and Jay Sims. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Gus Mercurio has one point in it. 39-38. Wayne Ashdown had a big margin. 40-35. And Nika Williams finally 39-36 to complete a shutout for the blue corner. Cool hand Luke Maloney. Maloney. Marks as well, yes. Welcome back to Centre Ring. Peter Maniatis proudly welcomes you to a international heavyweight contest. The big boys of boxing, Australia versus New Zealand. New Zealand versus Australia. Introducing first on my right, occupying the blue corner with Professor Louis Carica, Stewie Swale in the corner. He is a rugby league player from Auckland, New Zealand. In amateur boxing, a perfect record. Seven fights, seven wins, seven coming by way of knockout. In pro boxing, two bouts, one win from Auckland, New Zealand, wearing total black trunks. He tipped the scales at the Hotel Seville last night at 104.70 kilograms. Would you welcome New Zealand's Big Bad John Argyll? Big Bad John Argyll. And across the ring in the red corner on my left with Wayne Stevenson joining Australia's greatest ever trainer, Keith Ellis Jr. With a young man who's come through amateur boxing and kickboxing. He lives in the beautiful suburb of Turak, tipping the scales at 102.60 kilograms. Red trunks with white trim. Ladies and gentlemen, with a great wrestling come boxing name, Andre the Giant. Your judges, Gus Mercurio, James Boland, Wayne Ashdown. It's a big man for a big job. Your referee, Hictatious Miscellaneous. Andre and John, as I said to you, obey my commands at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. Shake hands now. Good luck. And uh, Andre Mernier, Andre Mernier in the red corner here tonight. Uh, Robert, should be interesting. John Argyle. Uh, has uh, not had to had to one the uh, one about here. I think uh, one about for uh, one uh, loss, one uh, fight, um, and the loss, and one win, one loss for two fights. And Andre 
many out there, of course, uh, one win from one fight. So against Danny Morgan, uh, John Argyle, the sport chain we, John, of uh, New Zealand for a win on points over four rounds and uh, uh, was defeated by Jason Suti in uh, St James Theatre, Auckland, uh, New Zealand uh, on a points decision uh, in December of 2001 and his uh, last fight was in 2002, John Argyle. So, when uh, did uh, Andre the Giant last fight, Stood? Uh, 21st of May 2004, Danny Morgan at Homebush Bay, New South Wales. He won uh, uh, yeah, there a decision, disqualification there against uh, Danny Morgan, it looks like, for hitting on the throat. So here they go now, out of the uh, red corner is Andre Murnia, uh, coming straight out there at uh, John Argyle. In the black trunks, Andre Murnia in the red trunks with white pipings and embossed advertising on the lower right leg. He does have a number of endorsements on his trunks, Stephen. Yes, he certainly does, and uh, some uh, visible tattoos there on the uh, torso. Uh, Andrew Murnia. And Ignatius Mislade is making a comment there to John Argyle already about uh, grappling in some fashion. I think there's Mooney there waving a left hand under the uh, nostrils of Argyle. Argyle. Oh, oh, big right hand from Johnny Argyle. Oh, Mooney there. Oh, in the fre to, fresh air, Stephen. <laughs> tried to, to uh, rock a Mooney if that had landed. That would have caused some problems for him. And uh, Nowhere near him. Nowhere near him, <laughs> Stephen. Argyle there. Oh, Mooney <laughs> there with He's a tombola right hand. They're flying everywhere, I'll give you that, Stephen. <laughs> but uh, Argyle managed to get his uh, head out of the way. I think he'll knock him over with a cyclone at that rate. Oh, and uh, his laces and ladies took him three seconds to push him apart then. Uh, well, they're big boys. I don't about that. They're going for it. They really are, Stephen. Yeah, they're throwing some leather. There's nothing about that. Mooney is 102.6 and Argyle 104.7. So uh, they're big uh, lads, no doubt about that. I grew up in the pre-metric days and, of course, living in America. What's that in stone or pounds, Stu? It's about 212, 214 pounds, uh, Robert, uh, if uh, there, and uh, you can work the stones out yourself. You've got a calculator? I haven't got one. Nor have I. Well, these lads are going right for it. Probably around the 17 stone mark. Oh. So you have no coming over the top of the right-hand court. Uh, goal just on the air hole there. Yes, he did. Got a good right in there. And the Mooney trying to get the left glove out as they're hanging on there. And uh, Ignatius Mussolini's referee comes in, uh, says, don't hang on, boys. There, yeah, Argyle coming in hard. Uh, there, grapples again with Mooney and trying uh, to, uh, with the left hand, trying to an uppercut or at least a, a, a midsection punch, but uh, struggling to get out of the uh, tangle. Andre the Giant is not too happy about that one. Over the boys, touch punch and go to their respective corners. John Argyle, there from New Zealand. Uh, also known as Jose Feliciano, uh, in, uh, that's his, uh, 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 where did he get that from? I don't see him in the glasses, or the steam. Uh, well, that's uh, what's on his record here from all the museum, the date of birth, and the date of the 478, so uh, John Argyle from New Zealand, as I said, uh, and his log uh, hasn't fought since 2002, and he had a win on points in Shane Weejohn. New Zealand at the ABA Stadium and prior to that, December 2001, three months before that. So I just saw that last round, Steve, before the Weijon fight, the lost a point of decision against Jason Suti, Robert, on the statistics. Jason Surtees, where was he from? Jason Surtees, in this suit, so looks like Surtees is my record. Yeah, a yeah, bit of a good look at your spelling, but... Uh, uh, I thought uh, maybe that three round was fairly even that first round. I couldn't really split them. There was too much, too many fresh shots. Oh, not that time though. Argyle coming in hard with a big right hand. Caught Mooney with it. Mooney comes back hard. Coming in the leg with this. And Mooney cuts He was trying to get through to the dual region. He caught him around the midsection with them. And Ignatius Mussolini's having word to Argyle. Pushes him apart and says, boys, you can get back into it now. Argyle comes in hard again. He's trying to throw a big right hand. Misses. A uh, fresh air shot there. Andre oh. oh, in the belly there. The Argyle coming through in the midsection again there, just missing the, just below the solar plexus, Robert. Oh, Mooney comes over the top of the right hand, but missed fresh air again. He was working on that belly overtime, Stephen. Yes, that's the, uh, that's the old Howard Cosell line, that one. And there goes the Argyle oh, coming nice over the top coming. of the right hand. Again, coming over the top. Mooney are in a bit of trouble here. He's on the ropes. Argyle uh, starting off this round, uh, all pistons firing here. And uh, Ignatius Slade is uh, telling the boys to split, uh, the bit two big men to split there. Argyle starting this round on, uh, like a tornado. Certainly been getting a few in there, uh, yeah, well, yeah, seemed to be some aggravation from the crowd there. I don't know where that would come from, but... Uh, <laughs> now that Mooney again, uh, trying to, uh, working away with uppercuts there to the midsection, but I think most of those got caught in the gloves there, yeah, uh, Robert. They, they weren't very effective at all, Stephen. 
Andre the Giant's a little annoyed with uh, Argyll. Well, Argyll's dominated the first part of this round, the Robert. That's why he, that make you annoyed. Of course it would. Mind you. Yes. Argyll comes over the top with the right hand. I don't think the crowd are too sceptical at this juncture, Steve. Mm, I don't think they're sceptical about anything at the moment because Argyll's, you know, uh, being, um, being a dominant force in this uh, round at this point in time. Mooney came straight through with the right hand, but that missed, and now he's trying to exert a bit of pressure there with the, the, uh, some uppercuts. He's big on the uppercuts, Mooney, trying to work away. You're trying to catch the jaw as Argyll comes in on a, with the jaw facing downwards. There. He's trying to catch him, but the big round from New Zealand, I would say, on my scorecard. I wouldn't disagree with you there, Stephen. I uh, don't uh, doubt it whatsoever. You're certainly right. Uh, Argyll came out flying with a couple of very effective punches that stunned Andre the Giant. He got pretty annoyed about that. Wasted too much energy with fresh air shots that were designed to be haymakers, and that was, frankly, not sound boxing tactics. Yes, not, uh, not too sound. Although I can understand he was trying to work the uppercut in the, uh, into the uh, jaw region if he could get the punches up, but the punches were returning into more uh, body shots. Uh, and, uh, managing now, got managing to get the gloves down to catch most of those punches on his gloves. So Mooney was unable, even with his headshots, he missed with most of them anyway. In fact, he missed with all of them, I think. So at the moment, Keith Evans waving the towel there in front of Mooney to give him a bit of air. And that look, well, he's a strong lad. He looks like he's certainly got plenty of go in him, uh, Andre Mooney. And here he is showing uh, some dexterity there, moving into Argon straight from the ring of the bell. And Argyle again coming over the top with the right hand again and Mooney coming with the uppercuts again but Argyle's still catching uh, all of them on the arms and the gloves of Argyle. He defends himself well. Nice left there from Argyle. He does defend himself very well at all times. Oh, well, the shoulder came in and caught Argyle on the face then. Bit of a shirt front. Yeah, the shoulder of Mooney. Yes, I saw that. Very effective use of the body. Well, that is not in the uh, rule book, Robert, I don't think, the shoulder. Well, he's engaging in tactics, and that's what boxing is all about. Oh, well, they've got to be in the rules, but uh, nothing uh, has become under order of it. Mooney are now pushing um, Argyle. Again, uh, using that, got to watch that uh, upper body, the shoulder region, cause a bit of damage with that. He's a big, strong lad, Mooney. Very strong in the upper body in the shoulder region. No wonder the giant is truly that, a giant, Steve. And that can cause some damage. Oh, and he threw that punch and then fell forward. I think he's suffering from the stamina problems, Mooney. Um, he lunged in and um, threw his all at that. Yeah. And, and he's looking tired. Oh, he came underneath and that punch was nearly low. Uh, he was trying to work away with a body shot, but uh, it was, a, was on an angle. It was never going to quite work for him. You're quite right, Stephen. There isn't too much gas in the tank. And he, he went to try. Oh, he got one in the esophagus then from Argyle. When he came in, he lifted his head up and caught a punch in the esophagus region, Robert. He did. What uh, Andre the Giant was trying to do was simply demolish Argyle with a haymaker, and that's just not going to work at this stage. Oh, a slapping right hand there. Yes. And that which uh, isn't going to do much damage either, Robert. Argyle's really feeling the effects of this. Oh, gasping for breath. Gasping for air as he done the work, Robert. That's what you've got to start the question. You've got to start asking yourself. And he's in trouble, Mooney. What's happened here? No, oh, Argyle's had one point deducted by referee Ignatius Missalades. He's directed the judges accordingly. One point off. One point off, is it? Oh, well, that could make a... Uh, that would turn into an automatic 10-9 round in Mooney, I think, and this... Argyle has done more of... You know, probably... I was going to give it to Argyle 10-9. So, probably 10-10 then, uh, looking at the way I see it. Uh, well, one point was ordered off by referee Ignatius Missalades, so... I didn't see what that was for, Robert. Can you indicate to me what that was for? I had some difficulty picking that, Stephen, but it looked to me that uh, it was an infraction after the referee had uh, separated the fighters. But I didn't exactly think that that would be my assessment of it. Mm. Well, now, how's that going to work? Because I had them... Uh, uh, in fact, uh, that'll be nine points for Argyle that round and nine for Mernia, because it was gonna, I was going to give 10-9 to Argyle, but you've got to take the one off for the deduction, so... I've got a 9 all last round there, which will make it a 29 to Argyle, 28 to Mernia. Yes, now that just shows you that you can get a penalty, you get a penalty at one point, you can nearly just about put you out of action in a short bout. Oh, of course it can. Yeah, no question of that. It you all sorts of problems with the scorecard. Yes, yes. Uh, pretty soon we'll go to Howard Lee with the official score, but uh, I 
saying in um, earlier, only just playing the distance of that three rounder and um, probably a good matchup of fighters for three two minute rounds as both of them. You know, they've, uh, Andre's not the fittest of men. Andre the Giant expended far too much energy chasing uh, Argyle around trying to demolish him when he should have just slowed down and, and confronted him. He's a big lad with plenty of uh, uh, whack in his punches and should have forced um, uh, Argyle to come in closer to him and look for the weakness. There was yeah. the odd hole there. You notice he effectively used the uppercut periodically quite well on uh, Argyle, mm. but instead of he would have been better off to have done that and a judicious use of the jab and be carefully placed the jabs with Argyle. He would have been far more effective overall in his fight strategy. So no doubt about that, Robert. I think you've summed that up fairly succinctly for the... Uh, Viewers. But once again, Stephen, these are two enthusiastic young lads who uh, gave it their best shot. And uh, Festival Hall, uh, the, the patrons here have got their money's worth. I thought it was a good fun fight to watch and uh, good on them. Yes, uh, well, good luck to the lads and uh, let's hope they can uh, build on that and uh, go forward with some further about uh, on another promotion coming up. On another Peter Many Arts promotion, I should say, coming up. Absolutely. Here we go with the visual position. How about a big round of applause for two gallon fighters, heavyweights, it's pretty tough in there. You give them and you pop them. Ladies and gentlemen, by majority points, Judge Gus Mercurio. Thank you, Noel. Yes, it is. Judge Gus Mercurio had it 29 points to 28. Red corner. James Boland had it 28 points each of two. Therefore, we go to the final card by Wayne Ashdown, which will decide this fight. He gave it 30-26. Your winner, red corner, Andre the Giant. Congratulations, Andre. Thanks, man. <laughs> Pretty tough in there. Yeah, it was pretty tough. Um, I've been struggling to get a few fights, struggling to get fit a bit. But um, working with Keith Ellis in the pro boxing. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, with Keith. So, um, you know, he was a big, hard, strong boy. So, um, yeah, it didn't do as good as a lot I'd like to do. Lost my game plan a bit, but, you know, it's only my second pro fight. Yeah, I've only had a you know, handful of amateurs, so uh, just trying to get as many as I can now. Keith, uh, it's pretty hard to find heavyweights, white heavyweights. Yeah, I'm lucky I've got a couple at the moment that uh, just can't warm him up. I've, I've warmed him up for an hour. He's still, he's probably ready to fight now. But uh, he's game and it's very hard to find a game heavyweight and uh, he'll, he'll shock a few. But Keith Ellis and Andre the Giant. Wrestler, no. <laughs> Boxer, yes. Thank you, thank you. Super Cruiserweight Boxing. When the bell tolls, your referee in charge of the action, Ignatius Miscellaneous. Judges, James Boland, Anika Williams, Wayne Ashdown. Your ringside physician, Dr. Peter Lewis. Ladies and gentlemen, six rounds of international super cruiserweight boxing. Introducing first on my right, 
occupying the blue corner. He's a regular visitor to Australia from Avondale, Auckland, New Zealand. Last December, he drew at Malvern on a Peter Maniata show against the current, the newly crowned national light heavyweight champion, Tiger Tim Bell. 16 fights, four wins, one draw. 90.70 kilograms, wearing familiar grey trunks with a touch of black or blue. Would you welcome back to Australia, Willem Maroney Schwelger. Schwelger. And on my left, occupying the road, red corner, trained by Ned Vasella with Michael Deguina in the corner from East Doncaster, Victoria, ranked in Ray Wheatley's World of Boxing, the number one contender for the Australian Super Cruiserweight Championship, managed by part of Meenam Manny Addis's big stable of fighters. 12 fights, 8 wins, 4 losses, 6 big wins coming by way of knockout. At 88.8 kilograms, would you welcome, wearing total black trunks, Costa the Rock Chandra. Six rounds of boxing, Ignatius Miscellanus. When you look through his record there, uh, uh, and he uh, had a big win against uh, Ian uh, Kulikov there at Pandas World of Entertainment Pendleton New South Wales uh, uh, in uh, February uh, of uh, this uh, year uh, there and also had a loss recently well, also well. Newcastle uh, to Ducky. Uh, but uh, uh, now uh, Costa Chondros there comes in uh, there to uh, on Schwelber. Schwelber of course had that war with Tim Bell at the Malvern Town Hall last December which was a draw. It was a magnificent bout. Those two boys put their heart and soul into that fight. And I was very impressed with Maroney Schwelger on that night in question because Tim Bell's gone on to do bigger and better things since then. And um, Schwelger held his own very nicely on that uh, occurrence. And here comes uh, Costa at the moment stalking uh, Schwelger into the neutral corner there, Robert, at the moment. And Schwelger just ducking, trying to avoid uh, Costa Chondros at this point. As Costa always does stalk, I vividly recall his fight against Jim Cheetah some years ago when he exploded onto the boxing scene, Steve. Yes, uh, he did. Uh, unfortunately, made a message to me that night, actually, back in 2000. There was a TKO victory in the first round of four, so... Uh, it was an explosive debut. And, that, uh, and I thought Jimmy looked as strong as I'd ever seen him that night. Here comes Costra uh, there, uh, trying some uh, combination jab, uh, jabs there. And I don't mean to butt in, boys, but talking about Costa Chondros, he, um, mm. look, he, he knocked out the Russian champion in three rounds. He dropped him four times, and Angelo Hyder was devastated in Jeff Fennick. He's got that type of punching power. Yep. And Maroney Schwager, we saw him fight a draw with Tim Bell. A lot of people thought he beat Tim Bell, so the guy can fight. He's, he's a well-credentialed international opponent. And no, about that. Chondros is walking up. He reminds me a lot of Mike Tyson. He does a bit, doesn't he, uh, Chondros? He's, uh, he's just enormously strong, and he's got explosive ability, Peter. Explosive punching power, as we've seen in the past against Cheetahs and a few of the other boys he's fought along the way there. Well, he stunned Jim Cheetahs uh, about five years ago, uh, Peter, in an explosive debut on the professional boxing scene I mentioned a moment ago. That's the way Costa fights. He's got that front-foot approach at everything he does. Mm. A strong lad, and... Um uh, got his corner, got him uh, looking in pretty strong in condition tonight. Schwelger bending down there as uh, Chondra trying to uh, work some punches around the head region. Schwelger watching intently at Chondros, waiting, having a good look at those gloves, just seeing where they're going to be directed. Chondros now working on the body around the ribcage of uh, Schwelger. Schwelger's obviously very concerned that Costa's going to let a bomb go at him, and he's really, really concentrating on that. Yes, he's, uh, and uh, Ignatius just saying, I think, keep the punches up a bit there. I didn't see any low ones, but... Uh, Good call there from Ignatius. No, he actually said he slapped him. Slapped him, did he? Yeah, mm. with the lace part of the glove, and he just said, turn your punch. Mm. And that's good referee now from Ignatius, Miss Ignatius. Yeah, no, he's, uh, Ignatius is uh, he's a master. Oh, one of the best in the business. There's no question of that, Peter. Ignatius uh, there, sorry, Ignatius. Moroni Schwelge comes underneath again, trying to work an uppercut up into the uh, jaw region of uh, Chandra's. Didn't reach there. And again, Chondras now stalking Schwelger. He's waiting for a chance to drop that right hand. He's trying to set him up for the big right. And then now, something Schwelger up there with a couple of good punches there. Schwelger trying to box his way out of the corner. Chondras working towards the uh, stomach region and uh, whipping a couple around the rib cage there just to give a couple of rib roasters in. And there goes the bell for uh, Chondras' first round. Did all the uh, necessary scoring there, gentlemen. The hustle behind the hustle. 
Right on the Vera Lynn, that was, Stephen. Yeah, yeah, or just under it, to a slip through the chin into the esophagus, Rob. Yeah. One of each. And uh, Chandra's again over the top with the uh, right hand, uh, jabs with the left. Oh, a little bit of a knock with the uh, forearm there on the Schwelger from uh, Chandra's. And Ignatius had a quick word to uh, cost nothing uh, underward. There's... Uh, Schwelger now is uh, just uh, poking at that left hand, trying to keep Chondras at bay there. Chondras coming in, slapping away at the rib cage, and all tried an uppercut, but uh, that was uh, sort of half pulled that back. A good tactic. He didn't pull it back on anything, Stephen. He, he had a red hot go there. Oh, he seemed to pull it back, Robert, because he didn't I'm, seem to go I'm on. I'm glad with you job. said that, Robert, because. Um, oh, 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 there is something there. <laughs> Chandra's caught uh, with one of those uppercuts. The one he pulled back, he then decided to unleash number two, and number two did the damage. Costa Chandra's has never pulled back in his life, Stephen. Oh, but he just decided at that point just that he was going to throw that uppercut, but uh, just pulled it ever so slightly back and uh, glanced to uh, Schwelber with it. As he opposed to pull a back. full body punch, Robert. So, oh, and uh, crash on us. It was a ripper into West Welger at that point, and into the body. I don't think this fight's going to go too long. I think John Ross is starting to hurt him to the body. Yes, there's no doubt that 90% of his attacks have been to the torso. He's working overtime on the belly. Uh, most of them have been around the ribcage, Robert. Uh, uh, there, I would say, if you go through the statistics, you'll find if you look at the ribcage, too, the ribcage is starting to weld up. Oh, crunching a punch to the jaw on 12. But 12 can take that. Oh, 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 It's going to be all right, but uh, uh, just didn't seem to change complexion, did it? They should uh, stop this. Welga. They should stop Swam. the fight. He's finished in the uh, uh, second round. Uh, K.O. Costa John Ross and got the great run. He's back in town, big time here. And the big corner are happy. Uh, Schwelger looking uh, a little bit perturbed by proceedings, but uh, uh, he caught a short, I think it was a right hand, and uh, went to the canvas and uh, the New Zealander. It's looking a little bit worse for wear there and uh, wasn't able to uh, take any further punishment, Robert, from uh, Costa Chondros, who tonight didn't throw a great deal of that right hand around the head region, but worked Schwelger over in the body region, which was quite interesting, around the rib cage, particularly around the rib cage and the, uh, the, uh, uh, the lower stomach, uh, sorry, the stomach region, just below the solar plexus a little bit, but mainly most of that body work was done both sides of the rib cage when you see some welts. Look, I disagree slightly with your observations, Stephen. Why? Chondros, Chondros uh, fought a well-balanced fight, and he, he was looking for any opening he could find. I certainly yeah, agree I with you. He found most of it around the body. I certainly agree with you that, that he struck more blows to the body than he did elsewhere, but I think you're not, even, you. you're not emphasizing sufficiently some of the very excellent blows, including the last one, that he struck to uh, Schweigel's head. And, uh, Overall, he had a combination of punches that were very effective. 
Well, there's no doubt about that, that you know, the that, that last punch there was a beautiful, I think it was a short right to the head and there might have been to the jaw region there. I was slightly blocked in my view. Uh, it was the short one that put uh, Schwelger to the canvas, sent him to the canvas. It did, it was a very solid blow indeed. The lad knew, knew he was up against it and the referee stopped the fight. Went to ground and he comes out with leaving the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Referee Ignatius Misalatis, after discussions with Moroni Schwalger, stopped the contest. Two minutes, 44 seconds, in a round two. Your winner, the number one ranked super cruiserweight, Costa the Rock Chandra. <laughs> Costa, that's a, a very impressive win in front of a mouth guard out. Ned, just the mouth guard. <laughs> Costa in front of a great crowd at the old uh, Festival Hall. Yeah, I'm so happy to be fighting back in Melbourne for a change and um, I hope I can keep fighting here and hope everyone comes to watch and I'll, I'll try my best to put on a good show every time. Thanks. OK, Costa the Rock Chandras, part of the Peter Matty Artist team. Congratulations, Costa. the centre ring, Peter Maniatis, Resurrection. A Friday night in your city, back at the House of Stoush, Festival Hall. The home, the only home really of boxing in Victoria, Australia. Eight rounds of boxing for the vacant Victorian Super Middleweight Championship. Your referee in charge of the action when the bell tolls for the first of eight rounds, James Boland. Judges, Anika Williams, Ignatius Misalaitis, and Augustus Mercurio. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first on my right, occupying the blue corner, Louis Carica and Stewie Swale, his chief corner man. He comes from Glen Waverley via Geelong, via West Auckland. 16 fights, four wins. Two big wins coming by way of knockout. 77.40 kilograms. His weight, red and white trunks. Sydney blood, Sydney swans, colours. Ladies and gentlemen, where do you go? Warm welcome to Wicked Willie O'Neill. <laughs> and across the ring, part of Peter Maniatis' quality stable of fighters from the Tarnate Boxing Club in Melbourne's Western Region, part of Team Destruction. He was a two times amateur champion in professional boxing, only one loss. Five bouts, four wins, two wins coming by way of knockout, 75.20 kilograms. His weight, he's a top shelf refreshment, whiskey and water. He is Johnny Walker. Walker. James Bolan. for this uh, big bout coming up here. Johnny Walker, great to see him back in action since uh, uh, I think the last time I saw him fight when he fought Tim Bates. I think it was uh, some uh, uh, back in June, which was uh, a good one. He put up a great effort that night, Johnny. Just a little bit outmatched by Tim Bell's experience more than anything else, but Johnny Walker's a real up-and-coming in uh, Victorian boxing, Australian boxing. It's great time. And uh, Walker is uh, into O'Neill pretty quickly here now. As he comes over O'Neill, trying to get out of that uh, off the ropes uh, area there, throwing Mellon. Willie O'Neill, he's uh, been around a while, Willie. Well, look, Walker looks prime super medals weight. It's definitely his uh, division, as you can see, is well built and and really well balanced. Yeah, he looks superbly balanced to Peter. In fact, Walker, I've never seen him in better condition. And he bounced into the ring looking confident, looking ready for action. Here. I, I don't think this fight will go too long. I don't, I don't mean disrespect to Willie O'Neill, but at super medal, I think Johnny Walker can go a long way. Oh, yes, I, I see, yeah. Uh, agree with you. Yeah, 
I see uh, the same thing as you, Peter. I see Walker ending this quickly. And Walker has to be in that middle right hand cross. He's going to be on the other side of the draw. And now he bounces down the And then uh, Walker coming up at the top there, measuring him with the punches there with the right hand. And uh, good fuselage of punches from Walker. I certainly saw Walker as an amateur, and he had a wonderful amateur career. Never any doubt whatsoever he was going to go on to the professional business. He really is a lot under his belt this left. He lives and breeds boxing. His idol is Mike Tyson, as you can see. It's probably very much like Mike. He models himself on Mike. But for anyone else, he's a power attack. Mr. O'Doncaro for his great sponsorship. John, congratulations. Almost was over before it started almost. Take us through it. A big right hand. Yeah, I mean, I caught him with a... I caught him with an early right hand early on in the round and uh, I thought I'd buck with him but uh, when I had him in that corner I knew I was going to I knew I was gonna end it then so long time for this so it's good. Any people you'd like to thank John? Yeah I've got a whole heap of people I'd like to thank. I'd like to thank my sponsors first, Werribee Tiles and Maxwell Engineering. Where's Robert's Massage? I'd also like to thank my trainers, uh, Andrew Woodhaw, Dave Hegarty, my manager and promoter Peter Mattiatis for getting this. And I'd also like to thank Kevin Hargraves. He put a lot of work into early on in the year. He's sick at the moment, but uh, yeah, I'll love him too. How about three cheers for our new Victorian Super Middleweight Champion? Have it! Have it! Have it! Okay, the Sergi family will now name our best preliminary fighter tonight. Good evening, Mark. Mark, who is your nomination for the best fighter so far? Uh, Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker is our best undercard fighter. Compliments of the Sochi family. Johnny Walker. Come on, 
Okay, Johnny Walker, would you please come back for your best undercard fight, the Sushi Cup winner for 2005, Whiskey and Water, Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker, did I have somebody bring him from the dressing room with Dave Hegarty and Andrew Woodall? Johnny Walker. Here he comes, the new champ. He is the Sergi Cup winner for 2005. Congratulations, Johnny, for Mark Sergi. Do we have the ACDC down for a little while, please? Mr. Croucher, good evening to you, Ross. <laughs> Lee Walker with the Sergi Cup for 2005. One reason, and that is to get this sport to where it should be, to be acknowledged and to be enjoyed and to give the young boxers an opportunity uh, to progress with their talent and uh, to reach the heights that they wish. And uh, through Peter's efforts and all the team here, all the boys, um, we've managed to uh, certainly create some action for boxing and this is only the beginning. We're planning on having a live broadcast through Channel 31 uh, that people can enjoy direct boxing like it was in the old days and of course KO Boxing Show is one of the most uh, popular shows on Channel 31. Thank you, I won't bore you any longer, let's get into some more boxing. Please enjoy the evening and well done Peter. Thanks Ross. Cheers. Okay, I'd like to quickly just, so for uh, um, before the main event we're going to have a minute silence for um, the, the, those who passed away. Me Okay, this is our semi-main event of the evening. Peter Baniatis, Resurrection, in association with Jordan Boy, Hotel Seville, Hellas TV, TVHKO Boxing, and Sergi Grains. Ten rounds of boxing for the vacant welterweight championship of Australia. Win the Charles, your man in charge of the action, James Boland. Your timekeeper of the bell, Damien Membry. Judges Wayne Ashdown, Anika Williams and Gus Mercurio. Ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds, a welterweight championship of Australia. Introducing first on my right, occupying the blue corner. We welcome back to Melbourne, a man who played football in the Western Region Football League. He coached Aussie Joe Buckner to a national professional boxing championship. He brings a young man from Rabina, 
Gold Coast, Queensland, with a fight record of 17 bouts, 10 wins, one draw, six losses, four big wins coming by way of knockout, 66.6 kilograms, wearing trunks of black and white, Collingwood Magpie's colours. He turned 29 years young yesterday, so happy birthday to the Tornado, Paul Tapley. Paul Tapley, Queensland. And across the ring, part of Team Maniatis, with Bobby Scrivano celebrating 50 years here at Festival Hall in amateur boxing, two Victorian championships in professional boxing, nine fights, eight wins, four big wins coming by way of knockout. Up the fire alarm by Stephen Peake. Never mind the fire alarm at 66 kilograms from Cafe Latte City, Carlton North, wearing trunks of gold, white and black. He is Shannon the Man McMahon. Shannon Paul, welcome to the Senate Ring for the Australian title. I both about your dressing room, you know, expect a good, clean, hard fight. Obey my instructions at all time. Keep your punch up, don't hold and watch heads in close. Case of a knockdown, neutral going here and the one behind me. Any questions? Let's get it on, boys, and may the best man win. since actually but that was a fantastic bout and uh, Shannon McMahon eight wins out of nine speaks the volumes for where he's at in Australian boxing. Oh, no doubt about that Steve, an exciting young man. I was away in the United States for a delicate fight and I heard a great deal about it over there. It was very highly rated. It was a tough fight, no doubt about that. And, uh, so it's from uh, Shannon McMahon again. He loves that left jab. He works well with that and uh, moves on. Oh, nice combination there, McMahon. Moves back into a ring centre. And a nice left hand jab there, right hand coming through and Tapley tried to follow up with a uh, body punch but just grazed the, uh, the belt of uh, McMahon. That's the hallmark of McMahon. He really looks at it. He's Great moving well too, yes. Mm. Oh, yes. Nice move to Shannon McMahon. Got Bobby uh, Scrivano in the corner there as usual too. A great uh, chewer of uh, boxes in this state. Oh, indeed, Steve. Slapping right hand from uh, Shannon McMahon on Tapley. Trying to uh, straight right. We just missed with that. Uh, just the uh, Tapley moved out of the way of it. Another, another important thing that McMahon is doing here is he's not working too hard in the foot department. He's letting Tapley make a good out of range, no effect. Ten round fight, you want to conserve your energy in the early rounds, and the man's gone in with a clear strategy in that sense, Steve. Yeah, he's doing a pretty good job here at the moment. Over the top, good nice combination there. No, oh, well, Tapley slipped one through, he slipped the left hand through as McMahon came in then. He did catch McMahon slightly unaware, sir. And no, oh, McMahon again there with that right hand, and... Uh, they tangle up, but Boland splits them again. He's fighting a pretty good fight at the moment, McMahon. He's attempting to control it from the middle. And Tapley coming in low and gets caught again, tagged by McMahon. As they slip in a neutral lock. corner. Oh, 
Some good to return punch there from uh, Tapley after a quarter left hand from the McMahon and the Blues. through so far, McMahon. This is probably has just increased the, uh, the movement uh, angle. He's trying, Tapley's trying to cut him off. He's trying to block him in a bit and uh, try and cut those punches coming at him and cut the corners off. But uh, McMahon has sensed that and uh, that's why he keeps moving. Oh, he'll have none of it. Tapley there, right arm. Oh, who's hanging on here? Well, Nolan will split them. Doing a good job there, Jimmy. As always, a top, top right referee, Jim Nolan. Made out of it back and Tapley over the top of the right. And oh, McMahon coming on the left. Cut missed. Tapley's now throwing leather with the left hand, catching McMahon. And again, Tapley coming forward. McMahon bouncing around there. He's got room to move there, McMahon, so no problems there. More oh, bowling having a word to Tapley about the head shots to the back of the head. Oh, McMahon! there from Senna McMahon. Again, he tried to catch the second and after cut, and it's a good round for Senna McMahon. Two away. If you want to look at it, at the moment, all roads are leading to McMahon. Well, all roads have led to Festival Hall this evening, Stephen. They're hanging from the rafters here, no question of that. Uh, I agree with you. I think you'll give that one uh, to McMahon. A wonderful evening's boxing here at Festival Hall. I wouldn't do that ring for all the rice and shine. Comes 
McMahon. Again, uh, moving in, uh, Tapley throws a uh, right hand.
was able to grab McMahon. Now McMahon again reaching with that left hand. And Shannon McMahon doing a wonderful job. Yes, very exciting. Here's now Peter at the moment. I've got Shannon McMahon ahead. I think he's won the first three rounds. Riding his grasp, he must be sniffing it now. He just it, it's that close, it's unbelievable that he's going to put the Australian title back. I thought Jim Bolland was going to stop the fight then, and it was going to be all right. Yeah, but did he asked him the question, Peter, he certainly did. Peter, this is certainly going to be another 10 8 round, uh, the way things are going, which is going to put Shannon about six points up going into round six if it lasts that far. Yep, he uh, was. He's coming in with a jacks again, he's looking for that open. He virtually, you know, and so I can't lose from this position, but it'd be, gee whiz, you wouldn't want to be putting any money on Paul Tapley at this point. Certainly not Stephen. No but, way. But look, Tapley seems to regain 
his composure a little and he, he seems to be okay. And that, that's just due to his fitness. He's probably he's so fit preparing for this match. He's, he's had plenty of notice. And he's experienced too. He knows he's oh, been yeah, through this before. He's, he's, he's a mature boxer. He knows the ropes. It's so true. Oh, the boys are in close. They've got to watch the hits there. I wouldn't be in that ring for all the rice and shines, then. Oh, it's happening here again. Robert, glad you're back, mate. We really have missed you over the period of time we've been in New York, and it's fantastic to have you back in the through box because you're really one of the pioneers of boxing, and, you, you know, we've, we've missed you so much in the commentating team. Thanks, Steve. It's great Robbie Robbie back here. I've missed it. Again. We've missed his dulls at times and some of those exquisite comments. Thank yeah, you, Steve. Well, let's get back to the bout, and this is really getting interesting now. Goes to Tapley again, the slapping away at the ear hole of McMahon. And that at the moment, McMahon just biding his time, waiting for that opportunity to arise, that opening that he hopes will come his way before the bell. But Tapley has certainly regained his composure, no doubt about That's that. That's what I was just about to say, Stephen, how quickly he's regained his composure. Unbelievable, the man in which he's been able to refocus and come out of that fog he was There goes the bell. What an outstanding thing after that knockdown. And two of them very close to get and come back the way he has. That's a testament to how good Tapley is. And also, what a great matchup it is between these two class boxes. Four no marks to both of them. No doubt about that, Robert, but you can't escape the position that uh, Tapley is in in the, the McMahon situation. That is probably somewhere around the 50 to 44 score line. This reminds me of that great bout I saw in 1997 at Madison Square Garden between Kevin Kelly and Prince Nassim, Nassim Hamed where uh, both of them knocked each other down three times. But that's an echo. And that's an echo, yeah. Well, it's heading in that direction. Oh, yeah. That no, was not. That's happily. That's happily. You can't get anywhere near the way things are going at the moment. You couldn't see that happening with McMahon. I think you need to, with all due respect to the good silver, Robert, you need to pick a better fight to look at the fact. This is an exciting battle. Yes. The fans are hanging on oh. the Raptors. I don't agree with you at all, Steve. <laughs> You said the bout was all over last round, but it's still going. <laughs> well, I know where my money's on at the moment. Now, uh, oh, a little bit of a slip there from Tapley as McMahon came in, and Tapley now uh, uh, punching McMahon to the side of the head. McMahon talking to Boland, and McBoland having a word back to McMahon. Now, what's he going to do? I thought for a minute there he was going to take a point of him, but uh, no. About, about the use of the head and the holding, Steve. Okay, well, I didn't think McMahon was doing it under ward then, but anyway, uh, let's see what uh, takes place here. McMahon throws out the jab again to uh, Tapley, just biding his time, waiting. He doesn't have to take any risks now, Senator McMahon. No, it's an Australian title fight, mate. I don't think he can coast the witness. So he can't he coast, but he doesn't have to take unnecessary risks, Peter. No, he doesn't, but I think that um, he's really got to keep the pressure up because Tapley's super fit. Yeah, no doubt about that. They need to keep the pressure on the lad, but... Uh, Got a pretty healthy points lead in my book, unofficially of course, but I reckon I'll be pretty close to most of the judges at the moment. No, I agree, I agree. I think he's comfortably in front, but he has to keep the pressure up. Yep, no doubt about that. As he comes through, again, got the headlock on uh, Robert, you were in Tapley. New York for quite a while. Look, let us in on that. Did you go into the major fights there? Or? I didn't so much go to the major fights, but I went to the, uh, the local fights, which are on every Saturday night at halls like this, and boxing is making a fantastic comeback over there. There is a boxing renaissance. I didn't think it was out of favour there. Well, probably not. Young lads are plenty of getting into it, and boy, do they get behind their uh, boxes. It is really well done. And Don King, of course, is, is really promoting plenty of good youngsters who are coming up. And there's a very fertile uh, boxing community over there. And it's really on fire. Yeah, a dedicated boxing channel on cable TV as well, which does wonders for the sport. Yeah. Cable TV, big help for yeah, boxing. Is, and we've got Channel 31 here that supports boxing. So yeah, yeah, that, that, it makes a big difference. Peter, and full marks to you for getting right behind it. It really makes a difference to the sport. No doubt at all. Now, Tapley now is uh, trying to uh, catch. He's trying to measure McMahon. But Mark keeps moving away. And Tapley is having trouble keeping up with him at the moment. Just can't seem to uh, tag him at all. We're just with any of it. Uh, McMahon is playing with the right hand. And then a left uh, on Tapley. Not much uh, there. Pretty even round, there's not much in it from anyone at this point in time. No, not at all. Not a great deal of damage done at all, and uh, both boys have probably uh, landed just as many punches on each other. And they're to make it fairly even at the moment. Jim Boland's a good referee, he's really with me in this boat. Well, great oh, referee, Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah, Jim. yeah, that was a great call before. I thought he was going to stop the fight, luckily he didn't because no. the fight's back in 
back in order and it looks you know it looks like Tappy's surviving more than adequate. Yeah, it's well, a good Timmy, competition, yeah. And Timmy, oh nice tag there by McMahon, but Timmy could see that uh, something that we couldn't see, that was that Tappy could come back out of that fight. Mm. And also, as you said, Peter reflects just how good Jim Bowler is. His experience just comes to the fore. And that's amazing experience. Yeah. Well, that was a great comeback round from the Tapley to square the round with the McMahon. Oh, full marks to him. I think he deserves absolute credit. And that, but uh, he's still got his work cut out. Now we've got four rounds left. It's a 10 three minute situation. I've got McMahon six points up. So well, uh, I don't think you expected Tapley to last as long as he did. You were quite wrong. You had him written off at the end of that round when he was knocked down, Stephen. Are you prepared to admit that, Stephen? Yeah, I'm prepared to admit that. I thought he was gone. I thought that McMahon probably would have tagged him fairly quickly after that and that ended the business then and there. But as it turned out, it full marks to Paul Tapley with his resilience, his fitness, and his ability to get out of that fog that he was in. He was able to come back and square the round. Now, there's not too many people around to be able to say that, and uh, I've given it a 10 all around the sixth round. I've squared it off, but that doesn't change the reality of the situation. And the reality is, is that he's got a lot of work left to do, and a mammoth amount of work to try and salvage something from this wreck that uh, where it's currently at into a point scenario. Oh, I can't see what might let him back in. Well, neither can I. I agree, but of course it's uh, still a wonderful boxing spectacle, Peter, and full marks for for matching these two lads up. It was a hard one to match up because the title was vacant, and, and obviously the vacant title, a lot of bidders and a lot of uh, purse bids and things like that. It was pretty difficult dealing with the people, but now um, you know, it's in there and it's over, and you know, it's, it's really I've, I've fought my fight to get this fight to happen, and, and Enjoy. Well, you've done a marvellous job, Peter, to get to these fights on three title fights on the one card as a mammoth performance in anyone's language in Australian boxing. So you've done a marvellous job to organise that and to put this on. This is a great spectacle and have given Shannon a chance to win a title, which is looking at him now if he can put the pressure on. And uh, Tapley uh, throwing now left hands to McMahon, the side of the head. McMahon bounces out. McMahon hasn't been hurt. He's all right. He's bouncing around as fresh as a daisy still at the moment. Tapley moves in. And again, McMahon hangs on to that left arm as uh, Tapley there. Bolton splits him again. But uh, Tapley's got to increase the pressure. He has to push forward. And he's got a big points margin there, possibly to make up. And he's got the hand in the air and speaking to the referees. So they're they up where they want to. Comes over the top of the right. And the left there, slapping away at the head region in the ribcage. McMahon. Uh, now, Peter, he seems to be fighting a holding motion. This uh, last round of this round seems to be holding, uh, holding his ground. Look, um, Shannon's obviously dropped Tapley twice and you know, Tapley's still there and that's, well, when you're a fight and that happens, sometimes you kind of think what the hell do I have to do to get him out of there, but Shannon's got his composure, he's gone back to the basics, so I hope he doesn't try and knock him out now because the game plan is you box 10 rounds and win on points and if the yeah. knockout comes it's a bonus. And he, it's a bonus, yeah. Look, he's winning every round, yeah. um, he's in no danger whatsoever. If he's the case the next three rounds, we'll so be it. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying. He can afford to do that. That's Peter, what I now we before. can. Now we can. Now we can. Peter, yeah. I think also he's sensibly fighting a conservative fight. He's got quite a few rounds ahead of him. Tapley's going to have a lot of trouble in the last couple of rounds of the stamina and strength when he's been hit two hard times like that and he's been knocked down. Good yeah. call. Good call, yeah. Robert. Yeah, no, good point. No doubt about that. And, uh, but, um, this round is, is racking up more points. He's, no. he's on top in this round. He's going to go into round eight with about a six-point lead. There you go. That's right. You need to do anything rash. You can just repeat it. He drops it out. He knocks it down to the moment. But this uh, Tapley is going to start to run out of steam fairly soon. You can see it now. But he, uh, he's having trouble keeping his arms up the whole round. He, he's a lot more defensive than he was earlier in the fight. And McMahon will exploit that for sure. No doubt about that. And uh, he's got a big underage behind him at McMahon too in his corner. He's a bit uh, 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 Cheer spot over there for him, awaiting for that big opportunity coming through. And there goes the bell at the end of round seven. And uh, another round before uh, Town McMahon. Well, he's a popular hometown uh, hero, Shannon McMahon. He's got a wonderful support base in Melbourne. He's an outstanding ambassador for the sport of boxing, and it's not surprising. There are many people in his corner, as the Americans would say, rooting for him. Yeah, no doubt about that. He has got a lot of support over there, and uh, what an excitable thing to be wanting to see a Shannon McMahon Australian World Away title victory. Now, if he keeps going as he is, and I'll say it again and emphasise my point, 
they will win this fight comfortably. He is seven points up on my unofficial card. He's not all definitely down five. He doesn't need to take risks. He might up the tempo a bit. In, I'd say he might go another round as he is uh, in round eight and might up the tempo again in nine and ten, possibly. To emphasise his uh, situation, gentlemen. And mind you, I've been consistent with that point of view right from the word go. No, I don't dispute that. guys will be probably having Hank Stanley's place in the next few weeks, I suppose, to determine all the awards, and um, yeah. I'm sure that Shannon McMahon, Eddie Daly, fight, Stephen Sticks in your mind, it'll be hard to beat. Oh, uh, hard to beat, gee whiz. It'll be very hard to beat, Peter. I haven't seen anything to match it so far this year, believe you me. Is there an official date yet for that meeting that we uh, Not as yet, but they're voting in the Trainers League Awards it's for 2005. Robert's back. I'm sure Robert will be enjoying the buying tea and cookies at Hank's place. Uh, he may not be here. anything. Yeah. Yeah. He might be, it might be before the 2nd of November, that's for sure, because we've still got a couple of fight nights, I think, on before. No, no, we haven't. No, we haven't. No. Oh, well, we might have it early this year, Robert, too. Yep. Well, I know the Troy Zantag are going to join us this year. Oh, well, that's an, a fantastic equation because Troy put us a fantastic board with SEN and the other networks. Yes, he has. And uh, SEN and Sport 97 giving you a fight night here tonight. Plenty of promotion, uh, Peter, through no, no, Gladiators of Sport and Sport and Law on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thank you dearly for that, Steve. We've really taken over as a radio man now. I've got to congratulate you. You're moving and moving and shaking now. And I hope all you guys are coming back to the... Um, the exchange on the corner of King Street and Little Collins for a bit of the drink. Certainly will be. Uh, thank you, Peter. Now, again, we're seeing at the moment the uh, repetition around Adrian McMahon is controlling the destiny of this world. He's quite remarkable how composed Tatler is for having been knocked down twice. His breathing is quite regular. It's not up. It's, uh, and I think he was just caught unawares twice with a couple of ripping punches which just found the mark and the, he was stunned momentarily he was able to get out of the fog twice and very quickly out of the first one and pretty quickly out of the second so many other boxers wouldn't have lasted that, that onslaught no, it's, it's all to do with fitness and conditioning and experience he's obviously oh, yeah. hasn't panicked and kept it all together and um, it's it's got his step, but that doesn't mean anything now because uh, Shannon's on top of his game and winning the fight quite easily. Um, look, Tapley's going to have to knock Shannon McMahon out to win this fight now. And, uh, That's not going to happen. Look, I can't see it happening. It's just... Stubbs, Ken Jones, Barry Michael, a host, Ralph Carr. Yep. Got a cavalcade, Peter. It's yeah. been wonderfully attended, which is just outstanding for the future of boxing in this state. At Festival Hall, the home of boxing. 
we tested the waters and it looks quite good. Yeah, I tell you what, Peter, I reckon there's a decent crowd here tonight too, where they've really responded to this promotion. They have, they have, and I'd like to thank the media and you guys for plugging in on the radio and, and getting right behind the concept. No problems with that. They we're very happy to uh, promote a Peter Maniata show at all times because we know it's going to be a high-class program. Shannon McMahon now coming in again with the uh, straight right, working away at the body of the tap at the same time. And uh, again, they're doing the right thing, Shannon. He's tying Tapley up as much as Tapley now is tying him up a little bit there. He's uh, uh, can see there's no reason to uh, do anything underwater. It appear to me that Shannon's prepared to uh, maintain this ratio of the fight at this point. Ratio being a very important scenario in boxing uh, when you're uh, in this position. Is that the arithmetic ratio or the ratio descendendo, I see? Is the ratio or the level at which uh, McMahon is controlling this bout to Robert? Yes. Probably what I would say about the 85% mark. Have a break, guys, and let former world champion Barry Michael come in and finish with you guys. Excellent. Now we'd love to see Barry uh, yeah, right. at ringside here. He's coming along, and now Jim Boland has uh, grabbed Shannon McMahon uh, again and uh, thrown him around there physically. Good to see you, Barry Michael, world champion there at Junior Lightweight level. Good to see you, Barry. Thank you, Steve. Great to be here, and, gentlemen. Uh, with Rob Hi, and Barry. And good, Rob, yourself. Very well. And uh, fantastic uh, to see uh, so many luminaries at ringside here tonight. It is. It's great, uh, Steve. It's, you know, it's great to, to be back here at Festival Hall with such a big crowd and a real good bill. I mean, this is this is a real good fight. This one for the world away title. Shannon McMahon, Paul Tapley, young, incredible man of heart. Oh, isn't he? Yeah. No doubt about that. The Barry, look, I've got on my unofficial card. I've got Shannon leading quite comfortably. Yep, yep. With the two knockdowns and uh, you know the two knockdowns, there's four points there. But I'll tell you, the last few rounds, Tapley, I thought he was out of this fight, but he's come back really well and he's landed a lot of good rounds. Yeah, actually thought he came back and squared the sixth round. Oh, I thought he won it. Yeah, thought he won it. Yeah. Good on the Barry. Yeah. He showed a massive uh, ability to recover from that second knockdown so sure. quickly. He's been landing on the right hand really well on Shannon McMahon in the last few rounds. Um, I, I really it looked as though Shannon McMahon was going to stop him. But he's going to him. He's make a real good fight. No, he's going to go to this. Yeah, 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 no question of that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't have thought so after the first knockdown, would you? No, you wouldn't have given him a hug. Well, I'll tell you what, even after the second one, Barry, yeah, you it could have all been finished in and there. But exactly. the man's a very experienced uh, a uh, fellow in boxing, he was able to uh, clear the head and get the breath back and uh, be able to continue on in courageous condition. And he's um, probably, you know, like he's got Les Wilson in his corner. Les a very, uh, very smart uh, strategist. He started throwing the right hand and hit every time over the top of uh, Shannon McMahon's left hand and hit, he hit Shannon McMahon with so many right hands, it wasn't he, funny. That, you know? Yeah, he was. He was uh, working away once. He, he wanted to get Shannon continually in close yep. to do his damage, I think. He just he had trouble handling Shannon when Shannon was uh, at the distance of the space. Yeah, he liked Shannon moves. He's moved very well. He's, he's shown he's a top-class fighter, Shannon McMahon. He puts his punch together well. But, you know, Paul Tapley is definitely the honour point going into the last round, but a very courageous definitely. Uh, that very, I think it's put him in the answer or something before. Shannon McMahon has improved since the Delic Scouse at the end of last year. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. He put his punch together well. And look, he's just going to improve every fight from here. About that, and you're going along very nicely here now. It's the last round of this Australian Bowlerway title tonight here at Festival Hall, uh, 14th of October 2005. A great million and artist promotion. Barry Michaels here, Rob Cameron, and uh, myself, Stephen Peake, here at ringside, uh, enjoying this magnificent fight card here tonight. Tapley now pursuing McMahon and uh, trying to uh, get something out of this situation at the moment for himself. Slaps McMahon on the uh, ribcage there, Barry. He's got to knock McMahon out to win. It's not going to happen. No. Shannon McMahon's too good on his feet. Uh, got too good a left hand. Uh, he's copped a lot. I think he's taken Tapley's best. And I, I think it'd be very unlikely at this stage if he's going to get caught by anything that's going to hurt him unduly. Yeah, no, not now. Uh, he would uh, uh, see him just uh, coming through, moving laterally as he does uh, like that for the next couple of minutes and see himself through to the title. Yeah, no, it's been a, a real good fight for the Australian World Away title. And, uh, Tapley, as I said, after looking to be in a lot of trouble, he's, he's come back and forth, shown, he, shown he's a real top-class warrior. Hasn't he, Barry? As I said, he's really shown a lot of heart. He has yeah. one. Yeah, like two, two clean 
getting knocked down. Oh, and the wrestling going on now. Oh, Shannon McMahon and the Paul Tapman throw Shannon McMahon on campus. The crowd's not happy about it. Not at all. <laughs> Shannon McMahon's tired. He's feeling, feeling the pain the pinch now. Yeah, he really is. And that was allowed himself. It's going to be tossed aside there. Bouncing around, Senator McMahon are heading for 9 out of 10 for his scorecard. If he picks this title up here tonight, it's a great effort. Oh, he's a good boxer, Senator McMahon. Yes, right dear. Tapley, Tapley uh, condition is good. He's, he's, come, he's come home well. Yes, he has. He really has, Barry. I mean, as you say, he's not breathing too heavily. He's really got tremendous sort of stamina, hasn't yeah, he? He's still walking up. He copped a lot of punishment earlier. You wouldn't have thought he'd be here. No, no, no way. Good on you, Elton Port Colts, tonight here. Congratulations. Mick Hargraves, the camera, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the Welterweight Championship of Australia, we have a majority decision. Judge Janika Williams gave it 99-90. Judge Gus Mercurio saw it the other way. He had it. 94 each of two. That's 94, 94 a draw. The final judge, Wayne Ashdown, had it 99, 89. The new welterweight champion of Australia, Shannon the Man McMahon.
Mark Sergi and Mick Crouch, and you fix the championship belt. How about a big round of applause for Paul Tapley? He fought with great gallantry from Rabina on the Gold Coast. Paul Tapley. Paul, bad luck there. He knocked you down twice. That could have been the turning point. Yeah, I think so. Um, I was never hurt at all. He just got me off balance and knocked down, you know, your two points up straight away. So two knockdowns, you know, don't even help even better. So, no, good fighter, uh, straight puncher. Took me a few rounds to work him out, so I just hope we get a rematch for us and get him up on the Gold Coast because I know I'll do a lot better. Paul Tapley, congratulations, Paul. Showed a lot of fighting spirit here tonight with Les Wilson. Shannon surrounded by beautiful ladies. Come across, champ. Three cheers for Shannon McMahon. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Shannon. Uh, Shannon looked towards the camera here. There was a lot of drama surrounding the fight. I believe Bobby Scrivano tells me he had an appendix operation recently. Yeah, you know, had my appendix out about nine weeks ago. And, uh, yeah, got back to the fight, so just happy to be here. A big step forward, Shannon, a national crown. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, you know, it's fantastic to fight in front of my home crowd, Festival Hall. Thanks for all the support. Appreciate it very much. I can see it. <laughs> I can see clearly now. Where is it? Yeah, I'd like to thank a few people. First of all, Paul Tapley and his gang for coming down and taking the fight. It was a great effort. Thanks, Paul. Um, I want to thank my trainer, Bobby Scrivano, Johnny Larkos, Johnny Ellis, everyone over there, Petty Magnatis, Keith Ellis had a hand in it. I want to thank uh, all you guys for coming down and support me. It's fantastic to fight in front of you guys. And I'd like to thank uh, a few sponsors. Uh, Danny's Hamburgers, thanks guys. Castagna Steel, Lux Hair, love you guys. And Everlast. And John's Concrete too. Thanks very much, everyone. Well done, Shannon the Man McMahon. We're coming straight back with our main event of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, because of time, here we go with our main event, Peter Matty Artist Promotions. Oh, thanks you for your great support at ringside, Hank. Resurrection comes to our main event. 12 rounds of boxing for the OPBF Federation Cruiserweight Championship. Introducing first on my right, occupying the blue corner with Pat the Phantom Christophe. Joining Terry Foxy Fox from Foxy's Jim Paraka, Adelaide, South Australia. Ranked number five super cruiserweight in world of boxing in Australia. He established a brilliant reputation as an amateur boxer in Europe. 362 fights, 317 wins, 
four times Yugoslavian, nine times Bosnian amateur champion, Los Angeles and Barcelona Olympian. He beat Sven Otke in Italy in 1990 in amateur boxing, tipping the scales at 84.70 kilograms. Seven professional fights, four wins, two draws, two losses, wearing a blue, royal blue, and gold. Ladies and gentlemen, Dobrovecha, the Bosnian dragon, the Banluka dragon, Sturman Nerman Sobanovic. Sobanovic. And across the ring in the red corner with Tom Gooses joining manager Peter Maniatis. He's 18 fights, 12 wins, one draw, five losses. 10 big wins coming by way of knockout. He's fought Bob Merovic three times, Kelly Meehan twice, Dan Rousel, Vince Servi, Tosca Pedridis. 84.50 kilograms is his weight. Rank number two, cruiserweight in Australia. Wearing trunks of red, white, and blue, fondly known as the Brody Bomber, gentlemen, James Grimmer. Your timekeeper, Damien Memory, ringside physician, Dr. Peter Lewis, referee, Ignatius Miscellanus. Okay, guys, the Bomber commands at all times. At all time. Shake hands now. And good luck. I can hear you perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are here tonight at the uh, Festival Hall, the House of Scouts, the original home of boxing in Victoria. For this OPP cruiserweight title fight, James Grimmer, the Brody Bomber, up against the Newman Sabinovic there, uh, coming out of the blue corner, Sabinovic in the purple trunks with the red waistband and uh, yellow gold pipings and, uh, and advertising embossed trunks, and James Grimmer in the white uh, elongated trunks with uh, blue waistband and red piping bouncing around beautifully. James Grimmer, uh, he is in magnificent physical condition, as in this, and uh, Sabinovic looks pretty good too. He's a, a cagey customer, Sabinovic. He's four some very big customers. He's been in Olympic Games. He's been in the Commonwealth Games. I think no Olympic Games. Uh, Grimmer has been a stalwart of the uh, Victorian boxing for a very lengthy period of time. Has Steve. fought the best. Tosca Petridi's right up there. He had a big bout with him, Carly Me, and he's fought the big men. Whoa, Stephen, you're doing your homework there. For God's sake, man, relax. <laughs> I don't know how to, Peter. Not when I'm this far out. No, no. You're good friends with the Grimmer family. We know that. You've embraced the Grimmer family warmly. He's more than a boxer out there for tonight. He's oh, our he's, friend, isn't he? He is. He's our friend and uh, compatriot and uh, a lot of time for James. He's a wonderful gentleman. Uh, you help him. I've You've helped him. You've promoted him. We've all helped him. Yep. And, uh, yes, that's true. Uh, he's just a gentleman all around and he's got a heart of gold. And uh, let's hope tonight that uh, he can put the big score here on Sabinovic here, uh, which is very interesting. Now Grimmer comes in underneath Sabinovic over the top. And uh, James Grimmer looking pretty fit and strong. I, I think he's uh, he's the lightest I've seen him, I reckon. Cruiserweight's definitely his weight. It's, it's certainly his weight. No doubt about that, Peter. It and really is. You can notice he's got the torso around the midriff region there with the muscularity there is uh, uh, showing, Peter. Definitely. Look, James has done the work. He's been going to Doherty's gym and at 5 in the morning and, and basically doing Rocky, Stel Sylvester Stallone, Rocky 1 type of training. Yeah. And he, it's really paying off. But... Look, when, when we look at these kind of guys in there, Sabanovic is probably as tough as you could possibly get. He reminds you a lot of Evander Holyfield. He's, he's been there, he puts the pressure on, he can take a punch, and, um, you know, he's really going to test James tonight. No, he certainly will, Sabanovic. He's been around, as we know. He's uh, fought in the Olympic Games. He beat Sven Otke uh, back uh, 15, 16, 15 years ago, which is a great effort. So um, no mean feat. No, no, I, I actually had an offer today from Steve Dalla. He... Um, offered me a, a large amount of money for James to fight Lawrence Tuasa if he can get by tonight. Yep. Um, yes. James in big trouble now. Sabinovic has turned James around on the ropes here and throwing some big bombs on James Grimmer in the corner. James has got to get out of there. He's got the cover up and get away from Sabinovic. He's in trouble, Grimmer. He's in a lot of trouble, Sabinovic. All over Grimmer with some big shots here. This has been a big surprise here, but my golly, Sabinovic, he reckons he's all the big man here. Please. I don't think Grimmer's going to get up. Grimmer's in trouble. Grimmer's gone. It's all over for James. It is all over for James. It's seven over at 41 years of age. What a fantastic performance from Foxy's gift. They would be enormously proud of them.
court games on a couple of occasions with some real heavy shots. Dr. Peter Lewis is in the ring. Peter Benianis is overlooking the scene. He wouldn't be happy. We know James well. We hope he's all right there. He's getting up now. Yeah, he looks to be a little dazed, but I think. I think his father's getting into the ring there. Yeah. And uh, James, his dad's a bit worried, but he'll be all right. The uh, doctor is still there uh, providing attendance, assistance, medical attention. And uh, he's wobbly walking to his ring. He's got, really got him and this fellow. Uh, uh, Nerman, 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 Salmon, I think what an effort at 41 years ago, just goes to show age, will not stop you from being a champion if you have the fitness, the heart and the skill, Robert, and that's oh, what we saw here tonight, even, yeah, yeah. a phenomenal performance by Sturman, Nerman, Salmon, over he fought, he proved everything by the kitchen sink of James Grimmer, and he has had superb success, he's a product of Foxy's gym now, they're all happy. Patrick Stoffy, former kickboxing champion, is there, looking very happy with his protege. Pat Stoffy would be absolutely, you know, well, he's not surprised, obviously, but very happy for... And here comes James Grimmer on his feet over to congratulate Simbabonovic, the winner, in true uh, boxing tradition. And uh, Howard Lee is going to try and carry out some interviews here amongst the mayhem in ring at the, the, ring at the moment. Mayhem it is, Stephen, yes. Sturman Nerman, he's uh, looked through his record. Trained by Tom Gooses, Foxy's Gymnasium. He had Bob Gassio, he beat on a KO in his last bout in July. Um, he beat to Tio Ricky, Terry to Teru, the Bolton Town Hall in June of this year. There we you saw him fight. Oh, sorry, James uh, and Grimmer, I'm looking at the wrong card here. Referee Nature's uh, Miscellaneous. Reach the count of 10 after two minutes, 50 seconds of round one. Would you congratulate the new OPBF Cruiserweight Champion from Adelaide, South Australia, Sturman Nerman Sobanovic. The boss here will talk to you, Nerman. And a big commiseration there to James Grimmer. Gus Mercurio. A major upset there. Nerman Savanovic, congratulations. You're all standing in front of the camera. Come on, give James Grimmer a big round of applause. That's a lot of courage to step in the center ring, Peter. Terry Fox, Pat Christophe, come across here, guys. Terry, you're on the mobile, you and Pat, you're ringing Adelaide. Yeah, uh, we had a fair idea that Newman was gonna win this fight, but not as quick as he did. He done really well, he trains very hard. He's good, solid punch, and he's got a lot of speed. Pat, it's great to see you working in the corner with Terry Fox, great friend of yours. Yeah, he is, uh, uh, Howie. Uh, I promote Newman in Adelaide, and I, um, I actually know James is a lovely bloke and I, I actually predicted that it wouldn't go past two rounds. This man's a warrior. He's an old school warrior. Well done. Well done, James, too. Nerman, you came to Melbourne Town and you conquered. Congratulations. It was all over in two minutes. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. I would like to thank you, first of all, my team. Yeah, my trainer, uh, Teddy Foxy. And then I would like to uh, thank my manager, uh, Pat. And then I would like to thank, thank Aaron. And I would like to thank uh, my uh, 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 other man. He was in a corner as well. Uh, uh, I would like to thank all people. I would like to thank uh, to Bosnian community came here to support me. Also, all other fellows from former Yugoslavia. Thanks. Thank you very much. Još bi jednom htio da se zahvalim svojim ljudima, svojim bosancima koji su došli da pomognu 
и да поддържим едно от най-важни тренуци към моят живот. Ер мало се ово догача ка напуни с 41 годно. Мало ко, я само и Джордж Фулман. А исто тако хвала свим людма из простора бивши Югославии кои се дошли да и да поддържи овај меч. Хвала вам свима. I would like I would like to thanks uh, to Peter Maniakis as well, who made this uh, great event, and my opponent uh, James Grima. I know and I knew actually he was he's very good boxer, very hard puncher, and very experienced too. But tonight I think I was just a little bit calmer and then uh, yeah better. So and then I was thinking about my kids and my family, my wife. You know, she she wanted me to give up boxing, and then she's very stressed. She can't. She used to watch my fights all the time back in Europe or Bosnia or all over Yugoslavia, all around the world. But when we came to to Australia, especially after my accident, I had I survived. I was out of the boxing ten years. So, and then it was a great. The reason I got back to boxing again after so many years is that because regret, you know. Uh, uh, because I, I haven't achieved uh, what I could in professional boxing, but today I achieved. I'm very proud about myself. I'm very, very proud about my wife. I love her so much. Uh, my kids and my community, my community, Bosnian community, they are always behind me when I, whatever way I'm fighting. Thank you very much. Thanks. I love you all. Boli vas puno. I vidimo se opet ponovo. Hvala puno. I've got a story for the age for you, Southy Pakanos. Plenty of good quotes there. Peter Maniatis. I'd like to thank everyone for turning up and supporting a great night. You know, James, we all thought James is a homeboy. This is boxing, you just got to accept it. It's a sport. James is okay. We're all grown men. It's a shame it happened, but we can't take anything away from Nerman. Nerman fought a great fight, and the victory's come to spoils. So They're still going to go to the after party and have a good time. Obviously, I'd like to thank Jordan again. She's been fantastic, and all the boys. And for the James Grimmer fans out there, James is okay. I spoke to him. There's nothing wrong with him. It's, it's just one of those things that happen in boxing, and we'll all see you at the Exchange Hotel. Once again, thank you for supporting the show. Don Carrot, the Sergi family, um, Ross Alatsis, Channel 31, and, of course, Jordan Boy. Jordan's over there, Sean Mullane. So for everyone out there, um, yeah, let's go and have a few drinks at the Exchange Hotel. Thank you. Thanks, Jordan.